Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, everybody. That was horrible. Good afternoon, everybody. Right. My name is Halila Kelsboy, and I am a crazy believer in change and a pessimistic believer in the innate capacity of human beings to change the world for the better when capacitated correctly. So, um, and at times, much to Sebastian's delight, I dance. You know, um, so before we start, I'd like to um, let you know that we're trying to make this conversation very engaging and to make sure that you all participate. So let me try to do what Se Sebastian um, tried to do a few moments ago. Um, can I get a yeah? yeah? That was bad. That was just, ju just bad. Let's try again. Can I get a yeah? Okay, because otherwise then the T didn't do its work, right? Okay. Um, so just to quickly introduce what I do, I, am, I run Unleashed Africa Social Ventures, a Tanzanian-based social enterprise that operates brands working in the areas of art development, um, responsible events and communications, sustainable public health, and social enterprise ecosystem development. We also work in gender. Um, so with a diff with a deep focus on innovation, youth engagement, youth capacity building for African development. Um, and to just start us off, I'd, I'd like to share a statistic or a number that I heard last year at a conference I went to. Um, one of the leaders of um, an African development organization that I will not mention, um, said that Africa loses $500 million a year for not engaging women in the spaces, um, in economic activities. Um, $500 million is chump change, I guess. You know, it's, it's not so much. You know, um, it depends on how you look at it. And in case you're not aware, I was being sarcastic. It's not small money. Um, so to the panel. Our conversation for today, Women in Technology and Innovation. Um, to quickly round us off, I will give you each three minutes to introduce yourself, the amazing work that you do, and your take on the subject matter. Thereafter, I will encourage you um, in the audience, should you have any questions, comments, um, please jot them down. We will come to you very briefly. Um, but before that, I, I have some leading questions that I will throw to the panel. If you have comments on the leading questions I'm going to throw, please feel free to get ready to interject at any moment. Write your comments down, and we will get to you. Like I said, it needs to be very, um, a very engaging panel. So are we ready for this? No, we are not ready. <laughs> are we ready for it? There we go. You know, we can leave them on the side. Um, I, will start with, I will start with you, Tanya, right on the end. Um, let us know who you are, what you do, and your take on the subject matter. Hi, my name is Tanya, and I work for UN Women as a program analyst in innovation and accelerating gender equality. So, um, in order to achieve the SDGs, uh, especially in gender equality and empowering um, women, we really need to find new innovative solutions. And um, I think that is especially in um, engaging women in technology, we really need to break these gender science stereotypes and um, give, um, promote women's education in STEM and, um, and really ensure that women have access to 21st century skills including computer science and coding skills and um, also um, promote female role models, uh, role models and um, mentors. So we need to have role models that are leaders in as innovators and entrepreneurs. Wow, there we go, Mariam. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mariam I'm Gonja. I am a living testimony of the growth of the Tanzanian ecosystem, uh, proudly being available for a couple of years and just expanded my geographical position uh, when I just joined uh, Seedstars World, uh, which runs uh, the largest platform for tech entrepreneurs 
uh, operating currently in close to 100 countries, looking for the best tech entrepreneurs, impact-led businesses to invest in. Um, with uh, this discussion today, I'm very curious and excited to be part of um, with uh, 250 million fewer women than men that are online currently, it's, um, it's, it's an interesting topic to, to whether, because um, we have already seen that so many opportunities are given to both men and women. When you look online today, you will see that every organization is saying, hey, we're giving grants, we're giving this and that, but we are prioritizing women but we're still not seeing the women. So is it a topic of opportunity? Is it a topic of the, uh, the digital divide? Or is it a topic of being, taking your seat at the table? So, I mean, we should get to a point, uh, because the opportunities are out there, to have women not just supporting them, but helping them overcome their fears, stand up and you know, take over this innovation ecosystem as we wish them to be. So, hi, I'm Vanessa Kisowile. I'm currently working with Sahara Specs as a team lead. Uh, so, that itself has been quite a journey, and my goal has always been making sure that we really see women involved in technology. So, my, my background is also in IT. Uh, I've had a diploma in uh, information technology, then a uh, Bachelor of Science in Hardware Networking Technologies. And one of the challenges that I faced during edu my education time was that there were very few women. During diploma, though, in a class of 26, uh, there were only four, if not three, ladies. And during the bachelor, there were actually two ladies in a class of about 18, I think, uh, and one dropped out. So uh, one lady remained. So, okay, the courses are there, everything is there. Is it opportunities that the women were afraid or what is it? But also I've been involving myself as an initiative to actually take part in um, you know, being a change, and I'm a woman, so maybe I see the challenges that we have. So I've been involved myself in a number of projects that support or um, accelerate the involvement of women in technology, like one, it's called Help to Help, run by a Swedish, um, a Swedish organization. Uh, they run an IT boot camp for women. But that itself is a challenge, because this is for women in university, and you find out there is a lady who doesn't even know how to s switch on a computer and she's in her second year, third year in university. What exactly are we doing wrong? Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Esther Lugoe Mengi. I'm a cybersecurity consultant by profession. I'm a certified ethical hacker. I'm a certified Cisco network associate. I'm also a certified information security auditor, among others. I'm the founder of Serensic Africa. Serensic Africa is a cybersecurity company. We deal with cybersecurity and digital forensics. Um, I'm a mother of two. So you can do it, it's possible. You can be an entrepreneur, a wife, a businesswoman. And also, um, I was in the Forbes list last year for 30 most inspiring young entrepreneurs in Africa in 2017. Thank you. So, um, wonderful. On to my first question. That was kind of prodded in by Vanessa. So I read um, an article about a very successful tech entrepreneur in India yesterday, actually. And one of the things that she pointed out is to be, it's very hard for women to be successful in the space. And she said, well, she, what she was doing was, what she was doing was attacking a way of thought. What she said was society does not give women, society does not give women 
the chance to be able to excel in this new space. It's what she said is, if as a woman, you need to expand your geographical um, uh, um, uh, area of, of, of influence, the man won't follow you. So that means you miss opportunity because you know, you have to stick with your family and you have to kind of try to figure out, do I go for that or do I stay for this? So just quickly um, give me your thoughts on that. Does society have to give us the opportunities or do we take them, or what kind of dialogues need to be had with society to create an enabling environment for us to take advantage of this time? Thank you. I think society doesn't have to give you anything. It's all in your mind. Your mind is your greatest capital. Is where all your, your brain is where all the best ideas come from, is where all the innovation ideas come from. So you don't expect society to do anything for you in order for you to thrive. You have to use your mind. You have, it's what you feed your mind. It's what you believe in yourself. It's what you think can happen. Anything can happen if you set your mind to it. The society does not have to give you anything. Society does not put ideas in your head. Society does not have the passion that you have. So it's all in you. Have your mindset right, have that courage, and you can go far. You can start from there. Fantastic. So it's more of internal empowerment. It starts from within. Yes. So leading us right into the next question, Vanessa, we were talking about this earlier. So does that mean that this new digital economy that we're moving into or that we are in, in right now, is it the one that is going to be able to allow us to leapfrog and um, fully usher equity in, 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 in um, the gender conversation? I'm afraid... Um I'm afraid I'm gonna answer it in two parts. I'm gonna answer it in no and yes. Um, no in terms of the fact that uh, in this economy and in this fourth industrial revolution, there's data that says uh, a, a, a large number in terms of gender, the uh, large number that will be affected are women. Why? Because they are not even prepared. They are not even in a place that there is, uh, you know, there is that a balance between them and the man. I'm gonna say a yes on 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 the other part. That as Esther said, as much as yes, there have been some hindrance maybe for policies or tradition. I would say, but from my personal learnings, I think when a woman takes an initiative. When a woman does something, and we can even see it from history, when a woman decides to do something, whether the society likes it or not, whether they back it or not, it happens. And when it happens, the society knows this is, ah, okay, it can be done. So it's, it's just a matter of fact that, not that we, we need to explain to the society, you know, women need this, you know, there's one, two, three, Let's just do it and let them see, and then their mind, minds will be changed about the subject. So what you're saying is, yes, there are issues ongoing. Yes, there are biases. However, there are opportunities to be able to leapfrog that exactly. and change the paradigm of thought of exactly. how women engage. Exactly. So the opportunities are there, right? Um, and it's just up to us on how those things are okay. Um, that leads me right into my next question. And Mariam, I'll throw this to you. Um, so... And I'm going to tease you a little bit, all right? Are there really women digital entrepreneurs? Or are there several female women, uh, female entrepreneurs working in male-led organizations? And then, are, they, are female entrepreneurs given similar access to capital opportunities as their counterpart? And then, what, if any, pockets of funding are becoming ever so present for female digital entrepreneurs? So it's a three-fold question. You, um, you really intended to tease me. You have. Um, we have female-led female uh, organizations that, you know, female is really behind everything. We have brands that make noise on the internet, on the media, that are female-led. So we do have those. Mm -hmm. But we also have organizations that are led by the male, 
even though the female are doing the most of the work, with probably the less shares. So we have, um, say, an organization X. It's co-founded, say, by a male and a female. The male would stand out. The female is doing the most of the work, but not recognized. So we have both situations uh, happening. If I am making um, an answer to your question, um, are they given similar access to capital opportunities? Definitely. Who is getting them first? Definitely not women. Everybody is given an opportunity. You see there's a grant proposal that um, we throw out. There's, there's 10 applicants. There's only nine men and one woman. Was the opportunity available for everyone? Yes. I run a competition across Sub-Saharan Africa. I will tell you for sure, we get over 70 applications per city. You barely find women. Was the opportunity available for everyone? Yes. So it is a mindset. Having grown up in a very male-dominated continent, that we still believe a man has to stand before a woman for something to seem or to be successful. We have, we have, uh, we have uh, examples of women who have been able to stand out, but we still don't look at them as successful female entrepreneurs. We don't look at them as successful entrepreneurs. We, we just have not learned enough from them. Otherwise, we wouldn't be discussing about this. There would have been change already, because it's not this year or last year that we've been having successful female-led runs. Mm -hmm. It's been a while, but we're still struggling with our mindset, which is what I've been keep, keeping saying that, hey, let's just scratch that. Can, you, can somebody look at me as an entrepreneur, not a female entrepreneur? Mike, 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 Mike. Oh, my mic? Okay. Yeah, can somebody look at me as an entrepreneur? Not just a female entrepreneur. Let's just put the differences aside. Look at everyone with an equal opportunity. And for my fem uh, fellow women, come on. I mean, the, the opportunities are there. We are the ones that are disappointing ourselves. We're the ones who are not taking it equally. If you start counting about organizations that are saying, hey, I am looking for female-led organizations that have money for them, you barely find them, barely. So yeah, so it's, a, it's something that we need to work on. Um, and to your last question, mm, pockets of funding becoming fe uh, present to female, there's so many of this. We just, let's not also rely so much on something that is brought to our plate. Let's dig. There's so much, so much happening. There's so many role models that we need to, we, we can look at. That's Let's good. just not be, try to be them, try to be you. That's good. Yeah. That's good. So uh, when I started my business, I was told that the only way I was going to succeed fast was if I had a male co-founder that I sent to meetings. And I was also told that it would really work if he was white. And, and I was told this by a, uh, a male in the ecosystem. He told me that, um, Kels, for you to succeed, there are some secrets you need to learn, and those were the secrets I was given. Unfortunately, I'm not a good student. So, um, Esther, may I, uh, may I um, come to you next? So, does the digital economy or the data age present a new workspace for female entrepreneurs as compared to the traditional, um, the conventional workspace, right? Um, and also, does it create a space that is less hostile, right? Providing fewer gender biases. And what kind, of uh, what kind of opportunities does this revolution really have for women of the 21st centuries when we're talking about biases? I'm happy that you mentioned uh, the digital economy part. Now that everything is digital, we can work from anywhere. You don't have to go to an office and work. You can be in your home, start an online shop or make your app and life moves on. So you could be a mother taking care of your children and still working to, to support your family and participate in growing the economy. So yes, the, 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 it has helped us a little bit. 
us moving G digital has helped us a lot because um, now everyone who has internet can do something. When you have access to the internet, you can do whatever you want, so long as your mind is set right. And um, I'd like to, to mention something that uh, I think she shared about um, confidence and us knowing what we want and going for it instead of us, uh, it being shoved down our throats. There was a time I had gone for a project uh, in Nairobi with my team. So I went to a bank. I was sitting in a bank and I was like, Every time I approach this bank in Tanzania, they tell me most projects come, like all the tenders and everything, they come from Kenya. So I went to that bank with no appointment. I'm in cybersecurity, so I went and said, you know what, I want to see your chief information security officer. They said, do you have an appointment? I said, no. What's your name? I said, I'm Esther from Tanzania. Esther from Tanzania? I said, yes, just tell your, your, your boss that I'm Esther from Tanzania. Apparently, the boss was in, in a meeting, so I waited. When he came out, she told me, ah, oh, so you're Esther. I was trying to figure out who, who is this, because I don't have any Esther in my schedule today. I said, no, I didn't have any appointment, but I thought I should just come in and talk to you. Then I went in and said, my name is Esther. I'm from Tanzania. You don't know me. I just thought I should just come and talk to you. I have a company that does A, B, C, D, and we could do A, B, C, D to your bank. Then I said, every time I come, like I approach the guys in Tanzania, they tell me everything is done from Nairobi. So he listened to me and was like, you know what? You have made the best impression, like you have made my day today, because I never thought there's something like that in Tanzania. Two weeks later, I got a call that I'm supposed to submit um, the tendering documents for, uh, you know, for vetting and stuff like that. And I got the job. I got that job, my first job ever with a bank as me and my company. So it's, it's not about what the society can do for you. It's not what, the internet has everything. Like whatever you want to do, it's in the internet. You can learn from YouTube. You can, it's start with you, your confidence, your mindset. Do you want to do this? Are you an entrepreneur? Like, do you want to be an entrepreneur or do you want to be employed? Why do you want to be an, an entrepreneur? Some people want to be an entrepreneur because they haven't found jobs yet. So now, Okay, you don't have a job, so you just want to do anything. Yeah, I want to do anything that um, I'll make money from. Then I'm thinking, so if I tell you selling tomatoes will make money, you go. Then two days later, you hear selling um, coconut will make money, you do the same. Mm -hmm. um, I think, Tanya, you also had something to add to. So I do believe that uh, the digital platform really brings new opportunities for female entrepreneurs. Um, especially in, uh, for example, um, mobile banking ventures that can facilitate women's entrepreneurship to e-learning platforms that can take classrooms to individuals. And of course, also social media has um, a huge potential to offer. Um, you can reach the other side of the world in one second and also it's a really low cost so I think that the digital platform has many opportunities for women. The opportunities are endless. Mariam, just coming to you for a quick one. Do you think that the increase of digital female entrepreneurs, you said that there are many, right? Do you think that the increase of digital female entrepreneurs provides or guarantees a safer work environment for employees, right? One that is woven by values of empathy, understanding, and definitely lesser biases. And then, do you think that female entrepreneurs create, by nature, safer working environments for teams? And on top of that, with the safer working environment, do you also think that female um, digital entrepreneurs are more prone to look at the genuine needs of the consumer as they're answering a problem? Um, safe environment for women, yes. For women employees, yes. For male employees, they'll have to deal with the fact that their boss is a lady, which is usually not a very good story. Um, so, 
having female, uh, more female-led organizations, it's, it's a huge opportunity. So then you have a female boss who wouldn't have to judge you when you have your personal matters as a woman. Um, does it guarantee a safe environment? Well, that, that's, that I can't say. It's uh, rather a very uh, strong point to make but at least it would give a chance to it. Um, I would try to shy away from giving empathy to women. We've had enough of that. We just need to get up and do stuff. I mean, the world has empathized on us enough that we just need to get up and do some work um, as female, as female uh, business people. Um, and organizations more likely to put the consumer's genuine need into play? Yes. A woman is usually looked at um, or usually seen as a person who understands problems from a very, like a family level, all the way up. So it is a chance for us to understand, to use our understanding into a benefit to get into innovations and now we have digitizing stuff, it's easier, so we don't have to like, manually do stuff. I mean, it's a, the, the, the digital space is supposed to cut down a lot of work that we had to do manually, so it's an opportunity for us, it's an opportunity for the world. So um, I have a Vanessa or Tanya. So you, we're talking about this opportunity. I was having a conversation with a few girls, and what I was told was, um, forgive me, I'm going to mix the languages. Ah, bwana, internet ngum sana. You know, um, coding ngum sana. You know, na, nafanya kidogo kidogo, lakini huko ndani, lazima nitafute wanaume wakae hapo, waumize migongo. So basically, what this young lady told me was um, coding and um, the infra infrastructure behind the platforms was too hard. It was too much of a science. And she would rather do it her mindset was that it was, she compared it to chemistry, how chemist, the perception of chemistry and the sciences in, in the conventional space that it's too hard for women. So she was speaking about it from an angle that it's too hard for us, so it's easier for me to employ men to work there and really be the ones behind the algorithms because it's too hard, you know? I mean, how do we counter this way of thinking, especially if we're talking about leapfrogging and having this revolution be the one that ashes in equity. We need to be able to play on both the back end and the front end. Okay, so first and foremost, uh, we're going to go back to the same place. It doesn't matter who started creating what. What are you doing about it? Because we actually have ladies doing coding. I know a lady called Georgia, you know Georgia, and she's actually a very good coder. She's a lead of Women Tech Mecca from Google, and she's a Tanzanian. Absent girls. We have absent girls. We have She Codes for Change. They're, they're doing the same thing for the girls. And amazingly, these women are adapting very fast. We have a number of young entrepreneurs who actually developed their platforms like... Uh, our cries and uh, tea, um, our routines and all that from scratch. So literally, I, I, I'm not seeing a problem if in the first place, which by the way is not proven, that it was the men behind the algorithms, the coding or the language. There are a number of women who are doing coding and actually I think you can, not I think, you can develop your own language if you think somebody's language is too hard, as long as it's bringing a product that's functioning and impact for the society. So I'm sticking to my point. I think instead of us, I think we're playing the blame game for so long as much as even if the society had part in it, but okay, now the society has understood, what are we doing about it? As much as they've understood, as women, we also need to move ourselves and support other women to be where they are to be. Okay, so what are we doing about it? Tanya, practically, what are the things that we can do to engage more women in this space? 
Um, well, first of all, I think that um, we really Mike. need to show young girls that it's really cool to go into science and kind of change the, the atmosphere we have because sometimes people think that um, science is more for male and humanities and arts, for example, are more for females. So we really need to encourage young girls and show it's fun and it's cool to, to learn computer sciences as well. And um, I think it's important to organize, for example, code camps for girls or give scholarships to girls in STEM, and also to lift, lift up these success stories we have and these uh, women entrepreneurs success stories, because these role models also play a big, ro uh, big importance. And of course, also to have mentors for younger girls, because um, the access to informal networks and contacts is also really important in the startup scene. That's great. So I've got a, a question that I want to throw to you, but before that, I'll, before you answer, I'll throw you the question, then I'll give you some time to think about it um, as I actually move to um, the audience. Do you have any questions? Does somebody have a comment? Do you have an intervention? Do you think there is um, an angle that I'm missing out on? Do you feel like there's something we're not touching and you're burning to mention it. There's a gentleman right here, a lady right here, another right there. I'd want us to take all three at a go. Should I give you? Okay. Okay. We'll take all three questions and then we'll bring them back to the panel. Right? So do you have a notebook or something you can write? Um, I don't have Your name, where you're from. I'm Hussein. I'm the founder of Zudua, which is an e-commerce platform here in Tanzania. Um, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, maybe just speak a little hello. louder. Hello. Okay, um, I'm Hussein. I'm the founder of Zudua, which is an e-commerce platform here in Tanzania. We started about a year and a half ago. And um, though I'm the founder, um, a lot of the hard work and the operations is entirely run by my wife. And she's doing an amazing job, um, kind of a job that even I wouldn't be able to do. Um, I think women are, are, are great entrepreneurs, they are great business people, and we should do more towards encouraging that. Great. Who's the second one? Hi, um, I'm Ruth from Ingenie in South Africa, an EdTech incubator. Strange sound, okay. Um, so I wanted to really sympathize with some of the earlier comments about um, opportunities that are open for all, not being seized upon by as many women. Um, so we offer an EdTech incubation program with significant funding, and we would love to, give, to have more women on our program. So my question to the panel is, given that we're not involved in like uh, skills development, you know, we're not involved at that stage, we're just looking for finished like startups ready for funding and support, what can we do to get more women to that point? Um, how can we help the playing field even up when we're entering at quite a late stage? One last question. Sebastian? Sebastian, one last question right there. There's yeah. a hand up. Where's the hand? Where's the hand? Oh, wow. Can you raise your hand again. Right here is a, a great example. Hi, everyone. My name is Reina. I'm from a company called Africa Stalking. We're a bunch of geeks, and we're really proud of the fact that we actually have a very high percentage of our developers being women. So. Um, I really wanted to add on to some of the opinions that the panel um, gave about, you know, inclusion and about programs for women, right? I think having women in tech and having women, especially in the technology industry, was one of the greatest acts of feminism. 
So I'm going to quote one of the very big African pioneers of feminism, especially African feminism. Her name was Grace Obianju, and she said that the ultimate goal is for, wom or for, is for women to exist as unique, distinct individual minds with unclutter uncluttered by patriarchal beliefs. So there was the aspect that a lot of this stuff comes from the internal aspect, you know, self-motivating yourself and confidence. But we do have to acknowledge the fact that there is a very diverse background for women in tech. The problems encountered by women in tech in other developed countries is not the same as the problems encountered by African women in tech. Just the way there are various strains of African feminism, there has to be various very diverse ways of countering those efforts, right? So when we are talking about campaigns like code, Mike. Oh, sorry. So when we are talking about campaigns like you know she codes and all of that, the context seem to be very very diverse. My very my day to day job is actually speaking to developers and trying to bring this context to the African, you know, bring the context of learning code to the African context, right? So the only the biggest problem right now is you barely ever meet. You, in a day-to-day -day context, you can go to the doctor and you can meet a female doctor, right? You can go to the airport and meet a female airport, but you rarely ever go and encounter a female woman in data science or a female woman in computer science. The stories are there, they are very unexposed, and so I think a lot of the, um, a lot of the programs that are being targeted to bringing more African women in technology really need to be super specific to the African context. And the problem now, I think also kind of touching on her question is, how do you bring more women in the skill set level into the story, right? I think it has to now be very, very targeted, especially to that context. And also, exposing the stories of women who have actually excelled in, women, in being women in tech, especially those ones who are now running companies, right? Those stories are not very exposed. So when I am picking a course, in uni, I am not thinking that, wow, this is how my process is going to look like when I'm 30, when I'm 40, when I'm 50. That actually makes it one of the biggest barriers to enter into the space. That's from my findings in my role at Kastoke. So um, I just had a question about, what do you think the role of legislation is in trying to promote inclusion in female in in women in STEM programs, especially on a higher educational learning or even on a high school level? I think we just need to give her a round of applause because that was one question, one comment and a few questions in there. And then you said you had one question, way to go. Those are your questions. That was good. Does anybody have one last, one last comment? Let's make it really short, straight to the point, and then we'll kind of dash through all of them at the same time, right? All right, so Sebastian has taken a seat. I'll just give you mine. Thank you. Uh, my name is Rahma Kiza. I'm representing Belor. Uh, we deal with freight forwarding. I just want uh, the panel to touch on, I would like to first quote the lady in pink. Um, you said we have played the, game, the blame game for too long. But have we really played the game, the blame game for too long? I mean, where, who, who is the best teacher? Uh, best teachers are parents, right? And are we traveling out there in the villages? I mean, what are the parents teaching our daughters and sons? Like the same upbringing, you, you raise the son, the boys, the young boys and the girls are different, you understand? So. We, we need to go to the root of the problem, and it's at home. I mean, yes, we need women in technology, but then every charity starts at home. I mean, in the villages, young girls have so many dreams, and um, I would like you guys to touch that fact. Thank you. So the role in, of um, parenting in upbringing the next generation of female-led enterprises. Um, so I, I like that you, your question was on legislation because that kind of touches into my last question. And I'm just going to um, bring it up to just kind of um, synergize with what she asked. So my question was, what are the unique steps that should be taken by individuals, society, 
the innovation ecosystem and governments to ensure that Tanzania, along with other African countries, leapfrog the perceptions of gender as we create a lucrative and fully inclusive digital economy for the collective growth of our social and economic development. So the, what are the unique steps that should be taken by society, individuals, the, the ecosystem, as well as governments? You know, so legislation policy. Then we had various other comments and questions um, from the floor. May I ask that we take it from, um, from Tanya coming this way, and, we're, and this is how we're going to close our panel for today. Tanya. So uh, we need to make women in technology the norm instead of the exception. And um, I think everyone can contribute to this, um, this evolvement. And the most important factor is education. So educating more women into STEM and, um, and also um, giving, the, giving women the opportunity to, to uh, work in, uh, in the tech field. Mariam, um, I hope you can also touch on her question about um, women in the space. Yeah. Um, so adding to what Tanya has just mentioned about educating women and stuff, to also answer a question about are we starting at a quite late stage? No, we're not. Um, so for instance, in Tanzania, you would, you would probably already know about different organizations uh, giving different skills to different levels of women. So if you look at absent girls, they're, they're targeting primary, secondary school students, which is at that point they get to, they have, um, they're at the stage where they get to choose their careers, decide what they want to be. Chicos is doing the same. Bonidivas was doing at a later stage, university level, post-university, um, so we're at least targeting every uh, specific sector, but are we doing enough? I'm not sure. What I'm also personally thinking is that we're doing bits in every sector um, independently, which if we had been able to do something in, like together, independently back together, it would have made much more um, impact to, to say so. Um, so, you know, it's a call if there is an association, and not just for Tanzania, probably Africa and beyond, because we're facing the same issue. You go to Kenya, you hear the same issue. You go to Nigeria, you go to South Africa, you go to Malawi, you will hear the same issue of female entrepreneurs. So, well, there's still more to be done. If we can stop doing bits and pieces and find a way to link one organization's efforts to the other, because we're actually serving the same community. So that's my take. Um, to answer or touch a bit in the question of parenting and the role of parents in you know, inspiring female entrepreneurs, well, maybe it will start with our children because when we look at the kind of, we have the BBC kind of parents, but a parent that you would still have to help to do a mobile money transaction, a parent who would, you know, you would still need to, to do a lot of work for, for them to understand that you're in Facebook for business and not for fun. So we have some parents that actually understand that, but it's, it, it, it's not their fault. They don't really understand this digital space that we are now, but it's a, it's a, our children are fortunate because we understand. So from a very younger age, we can start uh, taking part in their lives and encouraging them to be entrepreneurs as they move on. Just to add to that, so if, even if, so if we get the chance to mentor our kids and encourage them to move into the space, but we can also men mentor our peers and, and our parents and make sure that they now understand. So together we move forward. So uh, adding to what Tanya and Mariam have said, I'm gonna touch base on a number of things. 
like in terms of working together, it's no longer a personal thing. There, there's a lady called um, Nancy, if I'm not mistaken. For her, her program is actually for very young children, like from, uh, from age six to nine. So uh, she's, what she's missing right now are trainers. What she's missing or because she's using her own laptop and she's volunteering in Dodoma. And that's after she was part of the IT boot camp I was talking about. So she got the impact. She was going to impact another community, but she doesn't have yet support. So instead of me starting my own organization, why don't I just, you know, volunteer and train her children? That is first. And I'm going to support what Mariam said about her parents. And I'm going to share it with a very personal story. My parents had a very, actually, they still have a very hard time understanding what exactly I do. And there were times that I was coming back very, home very late because I had just started my, I was starting entrepreneurship, so I was figuring out what I want to do, starting a company, doing this and this. And you come back home around 11, uh, 11 o'clock, and it was really crazy, like really. But right now, what they say is, you know what, be safe. And by the way, I'm also a mother, so I'm figuring out how do I balance. I have a son, and then I have to get back late at night. But I also have work, and I also have a society to impact. So it can be done, uh, and the more they see the results of what you're doing, they appreciate it. Since uh, time is not on our side, and uh, our lovely ladies have said almost everything, I would want to, to just um, capitalize on this key point. How many uh, ladies here are techpreneurs? How many entrepreneurs do we have? How many uh, women in tech do we have? You could be working in an organization as a tech person. I want to tell you one key secret that you should live with today. The value that you put on yourself is the best value anyone is ever going to put on you. So if you see yourself success, successful, you are successful. If you see yourself going up there, you are going up there. Thank you. That's powerful. So basically what you're saying is be present. One of the, as, as we're going to close the panel, I'm just going to take a second. We must be present. This is not raising your hand, ladies. This is raising your hand. In this new revolution, we need to be able to raise our hands all the way and say, I'm here. How many tech digital preneurs are here? Females, how many? That's how you raise your hand. We need to be present in, any, in every conversation. We need to be able to leapfrog and think outside our own organizations and see how we can collaborate and make sure that we together progress forward. You know, make sure we're part of the table. If they don't give us a table, we make our own table. There we go. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was our panel for this afternoon. Have a great next few sessions. I love this. Now, don't go. Don't go. I want to see if you guys are extremely present, as you say. I want to see. Just a little test before I let you guys go. I know I'm out of time. Like, let me just do this quick exercise. Yesterday was the day of the girl child, right? And I'm going to ask you guys a question. I want to see if everybody here is present. Who runs the world? Uh-uh. Yeah. That is not present. I'm not seeing the value. Who runs the world? Girls. I look at you, Yenny, the only two answering here, and Kalila, I want to see value. You have to say it like you come mean on, it. Come on, come on, let's do this. I, we, I, we were just practicing, that was practice. Should I say it? Come on. Who runs the world? Girl. Well, you tried. One last time, one last time. Uh, one last time. Okay, you say it. Who runs the world? Yeah. That's how you say it, Sebastian. I like the punch. Anyway, great conversation that we just had right now, women in tech. Doing great things, Karibuni, and thank you very much. Asanteni, you can have your seat. Round of applause to them. <laughs>